as Mark Twain said, it is curious, curious, that physical courage should be so common in the world and moral courage be so rare. Courage is not rooted in reason, but rather courage comes from a divine purpose to make things right. Without courage, our action or inaction results in suffering of the few and injustice for all. As president, he made a controversial decision of conscience to pardon former President Nixon and end the national trauma of Watergate. Two men, quite different in personal and political background, came together to propose real change and reform in the financing of this country's elections. We weren't really trying to be significant or to do something great or even courageous. We were just trying to do something that seemed to, you know, have a lot of common sense. Yes, I spoke out against Georgia's new law. It did not feel courageous for me to tell the truth. If we apply love and wisdom and compassion, our impact will be like President Kennedy's, not only for our own times. Real change happens in the context of relationships. When diversity is absent, we cannot build relationships. We are here to recognize and celebrate a singular act of political courage nearly a quarter of a century ago when politics in our world were very different. Let us pray that when we are called upon each of us in our own special way, we'll muster the courage to do our part to preserve the values that make our country a beacon of hope, of freedom, of liberty, and of justice. There would be no Affordable Care Act without Nancy Pelosi. Period. End of story. Courage. Courage is in the DNA of America. Courage, President Kennedy knew, requires something more than just the absence of fear. Courage, true courage, derives from that sense of who we are. What are our best selves? And to believe that we can dig deep and do hard things for the enduring benefit of others. Hello, thank you all for joining us tonight. I'm Jimmy Fallon and it is an honor to be here with all of you this evening. Tonight is gonna be really special. We're, we're here to celebrate the one thing that we couldn't have done without this past year, courage. We hear people talking about uh, profiles in courage all the time these days. That was her profiles in courage moment. Or what will it take for them to be a profile in courage? We've all heard the phrase, but did you know that President Kennedy actually wrote the book, Profiles in Courage? It's true. In it, he tells the stories of eight U.S. senators who risked their careers by embracing unpopular positions for the greater good. In this spirit, the Profile in Courage Award recognizes public officials today who have the, had the courage to take the difficult stand, even if it means losing votes. The courage to put aside party politics, local interests, or their own career to do what is right for the country. The courage to follow their conscience and the Constitution and to do the right thing, regardless of consequences. Today, when too many Americans don't have faith and trust in their government, that courage is more important than ever. This past year, of course, has been different. Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, we've seen incredible acts of courage in every part of our lives. Tonight, we're celebrating the Profile and Courage Award honoree, Senator Mitt Romney. We're also excited to introduce you to seven brave people who will be honored with the special Profile and COVID Courage Award for the sacrifices they've made to keep Americans safe and healthy this year. To help us get started, we're joined by one of this evening's co-chairs and longtime friend of the JFK Library Foundation, David Long, chairman and CEO of Liberty Mutual. Take it away, David. Thanks, Jimmy, and thank you for being here tonight. And welcome to all who come together this evening to join in and support this long and cherished tradition. And thank you, Ambassador Kennedy and Jack Schlossberg. As we're here to honor people possessing both courage and character, with our 35th president possessing both in abundance, it's heartwarming to see that the strong and admirable Kennedy genes have been passed from one generation to the next and the next. I'm honored to share the role of co-chair with Paul and Sandy Edgeley, who we'll hear from later in the program, and to partner with JFK Library Foundation Chairman, Ron Sargent, in hosting this evening. We are all deeply grateful to the many sponsors who've stepped forward to support the event, an event which not only celebrates political courage, 
but also provides critical support to safeguard and strengthen the historical and educational mission of this much admired institution. For over 40 years, the JFK Library has served as a center of thought, exchange, and education. It carries forward President Kennedy's legacy to inspire the next generation to take up the torch of leadership. Today, the library has reimagined its programming to reach young people in this new virtual world. And tonight's event furthers these vital programs. Tonight's also about highlighting President Kennedy's commitment to service by honoring a noteworthy and history-making public official. Congratulations to Senator Mitt Romney, whom many of us claim as one of Massachusetts' own, but who is a public servant who continues to serve our nation, one who crosses state and yes, party lines. In these unprecedented times, we're also thrilled to celebrate the COVID courage honorees, those who you'll come to know this evening. They each embody the highest ideals put forth by President Kennedy decades ago. Sometimes great service plays out on large public platforms, sometimes in the quiet corners of often unknown neighborhoods. All of tonight's honorees put others before self. This roll call of noble citizens has offered just the tiniest glimpse of the amazing things that happen in small and big ways every day in every state in cities and towns across the United States. In his inaugural address, President Kennedy said that the energy, faith, and devotion we brought to building a better future and serving our fellow citizens could light the world. Tonight, we recognize fellow citizens lighting our world. I stand humbled in their company I'm proud to co-chair an event that recognizes them. Thanks to you all. And back to you, Jimmy. Thank you, David, and thank you to all of these sponsors who make this night possible. Now it is my pleasure to introduce the dynamic duo of the Profile and Courage Award, Ambassador Caroline Kennedy and her son, Jack Schlossberg. Hi, Caroline. Hi, Jack. Hi, Hi Jimmy. Jimmy. Thanks so much for hosting this celebration of courage, the quality my father considered the most important in public life. And thank you for making us all laugh throughout the past year when times have been so hard. That's probably the second most important quality. You've been a great friend of the JFK Library for many years, and we're so thankful you're here with us tonight. Before we get started, I want to thank some special friends of our honoree and generous supporters of the library. Tonight's co-chairs, Paul and Sandy Edgerly, and David Long and Liberty Mutual. We're also grateful to Foundation Board Chair Ron Sargent and the Archivist of the United States, David Ferriero, whose leadership and partnership make everything possible here. And to John Hancock for sponsoring the Profile and Courage Essay Contest, in which thousands of students participate every year. Each May, we gather to give thanks for my father's life and example and recommit ourselves to the ideals he lived by, patriotism, public service, equal justice, the quest for peace and the rule of law. It is an honor for us to be joined this evening by our Profile and Courage Award winner, Senator Mitt Romney, and the seven winners of our special Profile and Courage Award for COVID Courage. The pandemic has impacted everyone in every community and across the country and the world. As bad as it's been, we see a silver lining, and the COVID Courage Award celebrates the heroes of this pandemic whose compassion and bravery inspire us. First up, these two honorees demonstrate that there are many ways to make a difference. Please join us in celebrating Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer and Bernal Kotlin, owner of Bernal's Market in the Lower Ninth Ward of New Orleans. When COVID came to the United States and to the state of Michigan, we didn't know a lot about this virus. I sought out the smartest people I could find, and I think it really showed in the policies that we ended up utilizing to keep people safe. Governor Whitmer is really just an incredible, fearless, and poised leader. I see her as a role model. She is a mother. She is a, a leader. Um, and she's really, I think, done a great job with leading the state through the COVID-19 pandemic. My mom is the strongest person that I know. She has been through so much. And in a crisis, in a pandemic that has hurt so many people, and everybody has opinions on what should have happened, she has that, that fierce determination to do what she believes is right. 
From the very start of the pandemic, she's made the politically fraught choices public health experts said were necessary to save the lives of her constituents. In the eyes of history, she surely will be remembered for the courage she's shown in this urgent moment. We're all battling the same enemy and we helped one another through this and I'm, I, I'll be forever grateful that those relationships were there because I know it's helped me save lives here in Michigan. Mom, I know just how strong and passionate you are and seeing you being awarded something this big is just truly inspiring. I love you so much. I've got an incredible team and I could not have done this and I certainly would never have gotten this acknowledgement but for the work that my whole team did so I share this with all of them. The Lower Ninth Ward of New Orleans is and has always been a challenging place. And after a disaster like Katrina, the economic redevelopment of this, uh, of this neighborhood has been uh, glacial. So it's uh, very important that they have services um, like Burnell's store available to them. The closest grocery store, it's Walmart in the next city. There's nothing else back here but this store here. If you want to uh, wash your clothes, you're coming here. If you want to get your hair cut, you're coming here. Most important, if you want fresh fruits and vegetables, we finally have a store. You're coming right here. Food security in the Lower Ninth Ward has always been an issue. And during COVID-19, it became a much more pressing concern for many, many more families. He has certainly worked with families to meet them where they are in terms of their abilities to, uh, to compensate him and his business for their groceries. Never concentrate on the problem. In my instance, they didn't have a grocery store. So the only answer was build one. And I didn't, know, I didn't know what a hammer was when I first got started. He's such a, a part of the heart and soul of this community. It's so wonderful to see. And he's incredibly dedicated to his community and uh, to, to recognize that is appropriate. And we would love to be able to honor you for the work that you've done in your community because you've really just inspired so many and cared for others in an extraordinary way. That means so much to me. <laughs> this means so much to me to, to be recognized on a level like this here. There's something unheard of from a, a little guy like me from the Lord Night Ward to, to being recognized on, on a level like this. It's, it's such an honor. Congratulations, Governor Whitmer and Bernal Kotlin. Last May, when Caroline and Jack asked the public for help finding examples of COVID courage, the response was incredible. Thousands of people from across the country wrote in to share moving stories about the sacrifices of members of their community who put their own health and safety at risk. People who are helping to heal the sick, protect our most vulnerable, and provide critical support services, often in great danger themselves. Join me as we celebrate our next two COVID courage honorees, Daryl R. Marks, a Native American academic advisor at Flagstaff High School, and Antonio Green, an Amazon associate and former delivery associate. My grandparents used to say that you have to do for yourself. And it wasn't like do for you as a singularity, but like do for yourselves. What you do, you do for everybody. I always noticed that he was constantly in service to others. On his own time, late into the evening, uh, teaching his two boys um, the act of service. He was being a fatherly figure to all these students, all these young people, youth, our future. And that if they ever need anyone, anyone to talk to, he's going to be there. My home community of Navajo and our people had to sign away water rights so that the federal government and the states could build dams and power plants. And by signing away those water rights, that would take away from my home community's access to water. When COVID hit and the recommendations were wash your hands, I knew my community was gonna struggle with that because we already had the drought that was impacting our community. I noticed that Daryl was driving to another state to get supplies to take out to the nations. And even before COVID-19, this is a part of the fabric of him. He is a person of service. 
I don't think he gives himself enough credit for what he yeah. does and what, how he helps us. He's like, I didn't, do, I didn't do anything. But I think he doesn't give himself credit mm -hmm. for what he does or like yeah. how he impacts people's lives. We're supposed to do this. If there's a special recognition for doing this work, then that means not enough people are doing it. And that's scary because I don't want my children to be responsible for that. It gives me one more thing to say, why are we sitting on our butts at home? <laughs> right? <Love it. laughs> Get up, let's go. Let's go do for ourselves what we need to do for our community so that our grandparents can smile down at us. I was doing a typical delivery and when I was going up to my, the customer's door, I saw a sign and it said, someone in this house is going through chemo and they're having a tough time. I was like, oh man, I want to do something special for this, for this customer. And so I felt the need in my heart to go to the store and buy a, a card and some flowers. Just a smile or a, you know, how are you doing? Um, it just, it, it went so far during the pandemic. And I think Antonio really took this a step further to let a customer know that he was there thinking about them and was there for them during their journey with cancer. It makes me feel good when I can set that package down and knowing that, hey, when they come and pick it up, there's something they really need. But it, I know it's gonna make a difference. My mother taught me always to be kind to people, you know, always treat people the same way you want to be treated. So, yeah, they motivate me a lot. I still think about them every day. So they always had the positive influences on my life. Antonio is one of the most selfless and thoughtful people that I have ever met. Um, the world really needs more people like Antonio. Um, and I can really think of nobody more deserving of this award than him. Every year, in honor of my father's memory, we give out a Profile and Courage Award, and we would love to honor you with, with that award as one of them. Yes, my grandmother always had a picture of your dad and Dr. King in her house when I was growing up. Really? Yes, ma'am, that was the two big, biggest pictures she had in her living room. To have, you know, the Kennedys um, call me via Zoom, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm just, I'm shocked. I'm like, I can't believe this is Caroline Kennedy talking to me and acknowledging the story. It makes me feel good. I know my mom and dad will be proud. Congratulations to Antonio and Daryl. Your stories inspire us all. Every nomination that we received was deserving of recognition. It was so hard to narrow down the list. So we gave that impossible task to our Profile and Courage Award Committee. I think after hearing the stories of our honorees tonight, you'll agree that the committee picked seven deserving people who together represent the courage and sacrifice we've seen in so many aspects of American life. I'm proud to introduce our final three honorees, Dr. Amy Acton, the former director of the Department of Health in Ohio, Captain Fred Freeman, a registered nurse and captain of the Hanover, Massachusetts Fire Department, and Lauren Leander, an ICU nurse at Banner University Medical Center in Phoenix, Arizona. If I were to describe Dr. Acton in one word, it would be compassion. She really has an understanding of meeting people where they are at any given moment in time. She took action at a point and made difficult decisions when we had so little information. We had one mission, and that was to get our citizens through. Everyone reached across to help each other. My scientists have this knowledge, I have this data. Because we recognized that if we waited for more evidence, it would have been too late. And so her courage to really act at that point on what she best understood in that situation to protect Ohio was very impressive. And I do hope people will see that we are not done and that this actual next phase we're in is the most important time for re-emerging. And if we rush by too quickly or fall back into old ways of being, we will miss what we can rebuild. There's a sincerity about her commitment to the health and welfare of the community, which is really both inspiring and that everybody should recognize. 
wanted to call and tell you that um, the John F. Kennedy Library Foundation uh, has selected you as one of the recipients of our uh, first ever COVID profile time <laughs> for. So um, we're really we're excited. Huge fans. We're huge fans right. of your work and all that you did during the past year. And Aww. you were nominated along with <laughs> thousands of other people who really were just so outstanding. It was really an inspirational process for us. Please know that this is um, the courage of everyone on the front line. And um, I just say thank you so much because um, it's an honor to represent the courage in them. Thank you. I think one of the things about Fred is he's so gracious and humble and such a genuinely um, nice guy that people just rally around him. Fred basically ended up heading a, a, a department that we'd never had before, which was this mobile integrated health. And uh, we had to take a, a number of different town departments and get them to work together in order to make this happen. We all came together and we were able to, to go to these people's homes. They didn't have to come to us. We set up a phone line, a phone bank at the beginning of the pandemic. And, and then we dispatched the paramedics out to their homes and, and see whatever they need. And we try to meet whatever need they had at the time. It's one thing to dream up and, and see the vision of this program. And it's another thing to every day for over a year to carry it out day after day uh, through some of the most challenging uh, times that we've ever had. And, and to do it with such uh, grace and humility and poise. We had someone that was, was very capable and dedicated and we put in the time and effort necessary to get it done and he, he, he excelled at it. I feel really proud of what we did here in Hanover. It wasn't just the right thing. It's our honor and our privilege to serve them. I want to say thank you to Ambassador Kennedy and to Jack Schlossberg. I was quite surprised when they when they zoomed in and, and um, notified me of this award. And um, I'm very proud and honored to receive this award. Thank you so much. We didn't really know what was happening in the state of Arizona. And she said, you know, hey mom, they're opening a COVID unit specifically to treat COVID patients and, um, and they're looking for volunteers. And I said, well, who would volunteer to do that? And she was just quiet. And um, she had already volunteered. I felt the responsibility of an ICU nurse, as a lot of us did, to step up and care for these patients in a way that probably won't happen again in my lifetime. I really wasn't super familiar with a lot of the protests that were going on. And then eventually they made their way over to the Capitol and that's where things got really intense. I think that there's a lot of nurses that if they had that opportunity to be at that protest that day, they would have. And so there really wasn't a decision to be made. I just, I knew I had to be there. There were people um, wishing them death, wishing them harm. I felt that they were in danger, even though there were police officers around. And it just kind of felt like David looking up at Goliath for that second and feeling the weight and the power of this anti-mask movement that had really started to snowball. I was amazed at how calm they were, that the louder it got, the crazier it got, the calmer they were, and they just stood their ground. I realized these are people that would probably be my patients within the next few weeks. And these were people who were probably gonna lose loved ones themselves from COVID. To be recognized by the John F. Kennedy Foundation in this way about her courage is truly an honor and a recognition that is well-deserved. It just feels like a gift to be able to represent the millions of other nurses across the country that have been fighting this alongside me and all our coworkers. It just is a gift to be able to be their voice, and I hope I've made them proud as well. What an absolutely inspiring group. Thank you for all of your service and sacrifice, and congratulations to each of you. Now stay with me, everyone, as we go from COVID courage to political courage. This past year in politics was one for the history books. It's never been more clear that our democracy depends on the courage of our elected leaders. Let's bring Caroline and Jack back to tell us more about this year's Profile and Courage Award honoree. Growing up in a political family, one that is almost as big as the Romneys, 
and participating in this award has taught me that politics is a family affair. It's hard to enjoy the happy times and fight the tough fights without the support of family and friends. And often the backlash from an unpopular decision is even harder for family members than for the official following their conscience. That's why we always celebrate the family of the honoree and ask them and a few friends to tell us a little bit about the person they know best. When you're trying to play a role in a political uh, realm, it's hard because uh, it's easy to get focused on how do you say what's popular rather than how do you do and say what's required. And I think Mitt, as long as we've known him, he's always done what he thought was best uh, for the country, whether it was popular with the people who supported him or not. He's always done things for the right reason. I've never been more proud of my dad than over the last few years when he's really had to follow his conscience to speak out rather than conveniently remain silent and hidden in the background. I watched him march for the Black Lives Matter movement and vote to impeach a sitting president uh, from his own party. He's always had a strong desire to do the right thing. Some might call that integrity, others might call it a strong sense of duty or honor, but whatever you call it, it's clear to those who know him best and he always tries to do what he thinks is good. I cannot adequately express my admiration for Mitt Romney, for the votes he has cast, for his courage, and for his commitment to always and repeatedly standing for his principles over any political considerations. Congratulations, Mitt. I think the most important thing by far that I learned is, uh, is love. Um, the way he treated not only my mom, uh, but the boys. Uh, we were without question the most important thing in his life. So I honestly couldn't be more blessed to have a dad who's, who's still such incredible character in me and in my brothers. Um, he just is, is my hero and example in so many ways. From him, I've learned the joy of helping others who are in tough circumstances and doing so for the right reasons. Thanks, Dad. Love you. Dad, I love you, and uh, I still hope to be like you someday. My dad's defining characteristic has been uh, his commitment to a life of service. His life would not be judged by the things that he attained, but by the things that he gave. He's also someone who was incredibly generous, and, and I saw him quietly helping those who were in need uh, throughout my childhood, and that left a, a real impression on me. It's, in his case, less of a single act than it is just a, you know, a cumulative th thing, which he will always do what he thinks is the right thing to do. Well, we were so thrilled to be asked by Ambassador Caroline Kennedy and our good friend Ron Sargent to co-chair this um, evening's gala and award for Senator Romney, along with our co-chair, David Long. You know, we've always appreciated what the Kennedy Library stands for, what the award, Profile and Courage, stands for, and we feel like there's no better recipient than our good friend, Mitt Romney. Last year, Senator Romney did what no senator in history had ever done when he voted to convict the sitting president and leader of his party facing impeachment, a vote he called the most difficult in his career. He followed his conscience and his faith to defend our country and our Constitution. And it made a difference because this year, six of Senator Romney's Republican colleagues joined him to hold President Trump accountable in an unprecedented second impeachment vote following the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. Senator Romney is a profile and courage in our time and a worthy successor to the senators my grandfather wrote about 60 years ago. I want to thank the committee of the Profiles and Courage Award for this honor. In particular, I want to thank Caroline Kennedy and her son Jack for overlooking the decades our families have been on opposite political teams. I ran against Caroline's Uncle Ted, as you will have all surely forgotten, in a testament to the American tradition of placing people above politics, he and I later came together to promote legislation that provided health care for all Massachusetts citizens. At the signing ceremony, he captured the moment with this line. He said, when Mitt Romney and Ted Kennedy are celebrating the same piece of legislation, it proves only one thing. One of us didn't read it. Uh, now, in accepting this award, I recognize that I'm a stand-in for the hundreds of thousands of our fellow Americans who've been profiles encouraged these last many months. 
the healthcare workers, flight attendants, grocery workers, bus drivers, first responders, mail and delivery people, men and women in uniform, pharmaceutical researchers, and so many, many, many more. I also want to represent my Senate colleagues who have taken votes of conscience. Now, many of us have been disappointed of late by the actions of some people who've chosen the easy way, playing to the crowd, itching the ears of the resentful with conspiracies and accusations. I take heart in the fact that such displays are still newsworthy and are generally met with disdain. But today, many of us in public life are guilty of a fault less reprehensible, though similarly consequential. Some of us on the right infect the nation with claims of election fraud, tech and media outrages, even vaccine fantasies. From the left come hyper-woke accusations and antipathy towards free enterprise, the very means of our prosperity. Our domestic political squabbles divert our national attention from the three great challenges America faces, challenges which, if ignored, may be tragic. The first of these is the rise of China. It's on track to become the global hegemon. China will have the largest economy by far, the most powerful military, and the most sway over the standards and principles by which nations interact. What a world led by China might look like is evidenced by life in China today. Genocide of a million Uyghurs and other ethnic minorities. Brutal repression of the people in Hong Kong. Censorship of all forms of the media. A mass surveillance state aimed at crushing any dissent and rampant corruption. A second challenge is global climate change. Politicians play to our respective bases with small bore laws and regulations that have no or diminish de minimis actual impact on global emissions. We shrink from effective measures, such as placing a price on carbon, border adjustment tariffs, nuclear power, and so forth. A third challenge is the degradation of our national balance sheet. In good times and bad, we add trillions to our national debt. In our political campaigns, we conveniently promise not to even touch the two-thirds of federal spending that's automatic and which is part of the federal spending that is growing faster than the economy. And left unchecked, the interest on all this debt will choke our kids' future. To take on these enormous challenges will chart the future course of our civilization. We need to have the courage in our elected leaders that can match the courage we've witnessed from our countrymen and countrywomen during the pandemic. And so I join with you in this charge. And I call to mind the words of President John F. Kennedy, quote, let us not despair, but act. Let us not seek the Republican answer or the Democratic answer, but the right answer. Let us not seek to fix the blame for the past. Let us accept our own responsibility for the future. Thank you. Hello, everyone. First, I, I want to congratulate you, Senator Romney, for receiving this honor. Uh, going against the grain is, is never easy. And you followed your heart and reminded us all what it looks like to serve the American people with integrity. Um, Senator Romney, did you ever imagine that you would receive a John F. Kennedy profile in Courage Award? And how does it feel? No, that, that is not something I would have imagined. Uh, more likely to have found little green men on Mars, I'm afraid, Jimmy. Uh, uh, an extraordinary honor, and, and, and particularly at a time when there have been so many profiles in courage in our country dealing with COVID, from people who work on the front lines and grocery stores and taxi cabs and drivers of all kinds and postal workers and men and women in the armed forces. It's, uh, it's very humbling, but a, but a great honor, and obviously, which comes from a family that has uh, sacrificed enormously over the years for our country. Senator Romney, you, you worked with Senator Ted Kennedy as governor of Massachusetts and, and ran against him for U.S. Senate. What do you, what do you think uh, you might have been able to accomplish together in the Senate if we were alive today? 
Boy, that's a, uh, that's a great question and one I wish I had a great answer for. I mean, uh, Senator Kennedy had the, uh, the passion of, uh, uh, let's say, Bernie Sanders, all right? He, he's a man who knew what he wanted, but he also had the judgment uh, uh, on how to get things done that you saw in someone like Lamar Alexander. And, and so he would have had the passion for what America needs, but also the skill and the judgment and the experience to say, okay, how can we work across the aisle to actually get something done? So I think with regards to healthcare, immigration, tax policy, balancing our budget. Those are the kinds of things he'd be able to tackle. Uh, and uh, I got to tell you the truth, I wish he were still here. Caroline, what kinds of courage do you hope to see from Congress or elected leaders today? Well, Senator Romney has set a great example. And I think what we all want is for our public officials to follow their conscience, to uh, speak the truth, to uphold the rule of law, to act courageously when necessary um, alone, um, but also to have the courage to compromise sometimes and get things done uh, for the American people. So Senator Romney laid out a list of health care and immigration, and um, we have big problems in this country right now. We're coming back from a pandemic, and I think we really need our public officials to show us the way forward and work together to do that. Yeah. Uh, Jack, how about you? How, how can Senator Romney's courage be an inspiration for your generation? Well, I think Senator Romney showed everyone my age that faith and courage aren't outdated qualities and that politics can be a noble profession. And uh, I voted for um, Barack Obama in 2012. I, I didn't vote for, for Senator Romney, then, uh, then the Republican presidential candidate. And I think it shows everyone my age that things can change and, you know, we can find uh, things to be inspired by in the people um, who, who don't agree with us on, on every issue. Um, we can still recognize them when they do stand up uh, and do what's right. Uh, Jack, well, what, what have you learned about political courage in your work on the Profile Courage Award Committee? Well, I've learned uh, that my mother is usually right, <laughs> uh, if not always. Exactly right. Um, and I've learned how to, how to wait uh, until the conversation is just at the right time to suggest that Senator Romney be the one <laughs> to win the award and to lay out a perfect argument for why. Uh, Caroline, what do you hope people watching take away from tonight's event? Well, I think um, people really are looking for how to navigate their own lives now. We feel that the world has changed. Um, but I think these eternal values really can guide us. They're timeless. And I think the example of Senator Romney, of our other winners uh, tonight, really shows us how we can all act in our daily lives to do more for those around us, to, to sacrifice and give, and, um, and to follow our consciences. So I think that it's so important in public life, but I think all of us can, um, can take you know, courage and take heart from, from the example in our own private daily lives as well. Last question for you, Senator Romney. Do you have any advice for young people out there who are thinking of running for elected office? Yeah, I guess I do, which is, you know, I, I was in politics and have been in politics for some years, and I wish I could tell you that I've never made a decision uh, based on politics, that I've always followed my conscience. And the truth is, uh, I've cut the corners uh, more than one time, and, uh, and I regret that, and those things haunt me. And I decided when I came to the Senate that I was not going to do that, that I was going to very carefully do what I believed was right every opportunity that came to me. And, uh, and I can tell you, you sleep a lot better. <laughs> Life is a lot more full if you don't have to worry about, uh, about having uh, ignored your conscience. Yeah. Uh, and so throughout your life, whether it's in business or medicine or law or politics, uh, making a decision where you can sleep well knowing that you've done what your conscience tells you is right is without question the, uh, the decision that will give you the greatest sense of accomplishment and achievement and satisfaction. Well, thank you for that. Congratulations again. Senator Romney. Thanks, Jimmy. Good to see you and to be with you. Thanks for hosting this this evening. And so, so much appreciation to, to Caroline Kennedy and to Jack and for the entire committee that uh, has helped organize this. Wait, wait, wait. Before we go, before we go, Jimmy, we yeah. just have one more thing we're hoping you could help us with. Sure. We heard you are really good at writing thank you notes, and there are a few people we need to thank tonight. Do you think that you could give us a hand? Thank you notes is... That's kind of my thing. Yeah, that's, uh, it's my favorite thing. I, I would love to help. Okay, great. Okay, we're ready. Well, how, do we, how do we do this? How do we start? For, first, you need 
you need some thank you note writing music. Can we get some music, please? S second, you need a list of people that you want to thank. Okay, wait, okay, good. Yeah. Uh, finally, you need the perfect writing technique, and this, here's how you do it. You wait for the part, and you go. It's, a, it's an arc to it, and uh, it's patented, but I'll, I'll let you have it for free tonight. <laughs> okay, for my first note, <laughs> I want to write to the amazing group of people who led us to success tonight. Thank you, David Long and Liberty Mutual, Ron and Jill Sargent, Paul and Sandy Edgerly, Nancy Donahue and the entire Donahue family, Raytheon Technologies, and Bain Capital. Speaking of Bain Capital, for my first thank you note, I want to thank everyone on Bain's leadership team who has joined us to celebrate our honorees tonight. Josh and Anita Beckenstein, Jonathan and Jeannie Levine, Steve and Debbie Barnes, John and Stephanie Connaughton, Mike Krupka, and Steve and Judy Pagluka. Jack, you gotta, Jack, you gotta do this. Jack, you, you, you gotta, you gotta do that. That starts the music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's right. No big deal. You got, you work out. Caroline, show them how it's done. <laughs> okay, okay. For the next one, we are so <laughs> grateful. Oh my God. The leading corporate partners, without whom we could not have had this celebration of courage. Thank you. Do I? To AT&T, oh <laughs> Bank of America, <laughs> Eversource Energy, John Hancock, Vertex, and Wilmer Hale. <laughs> wow! Last, <laughs> it's wild. <laughs> Last, but definitely not least, there are so many generous individuals and friends who support the JFK Library's mission. Ken Feinberg and Camille B. Rose, Robert Kraft, Ted Hoff and Kathleen O'Connell, David Weinstein, Trudy and Dan Simmons, and most importantly, thank you, Jimmy, for helping us celebrate Courage tonight and teaching us how to write a proper thank you note. We couldn't have done any of this without you. Well, thanks, Jack. I guess you didn't need me. Uh, Caroline and Jack, I couldn't have done that better myself. You're a very quick study. Uh, well, that's all we have, folks. On behalf of the JFK Library Foundation, thank you all for joining us tonight. Well, this year has been challenging in so many ways, it's also brought out the best in so many. Again, I want to congratulate Senator Romney and the seven incredible COVID Courage Award honorees. I also want to thank the frontline and essential workers who over the past year have made incredible sacrifices to provide critical support services to those in need. We could not have gotten through the pandemic without your courage. And a final thanks to the Profile and Courage Award Committee that works so hard behind the scenes to choosing the inspiring group of people we just honored. I'm gonna let them and some friends of the Kennedy Library help give President Kennedy the final word here tonight. Good night. Courage requires no exceptional qualifications. No magic formula. No special combination of time, place, or circumstance. It is an opportunity that sooner or later is presented to us all. Politics merely furnishes one arena. Which imposes... Special tests of courage. In whatever arena of life... One may meet the challenge of courage. Whatever may be the sacrifices they face... They follow their conscience, the loss of their friends... Their fortune, their contentment... Even the esteem of their fellow men. Each person must decide for themselves the course they will follow. The stories of past courage... Can define that ingredient. They can teach, they can offer hope. They can provide inspiration. But they cannot supply courage itself. For this, each person must look into their own soul. 